Summers in New Orleans are long, hot, and humid. Sometimes it feels like the oppressive heat is giving you a warm, damp hug. Now, there's a silver lining. This intense heat means there's fewer tourists. Airlines and hotels start throwing out deals like they were Mardi Gras beads, hoping to lure in budget-conscious travelers. So, if you're not afraid of sweating through your shirt just by existing, summer in New Orleans might be your golden ticket. Sure, it's not for the faint of heart, but the trade-off of fewer crowds and cheaper accommodations can be totally worth it. Just think of it as a challenge. A sweaty, humid, and ultimately rewarding challenge. The key to enjoying your summertime vacation in the Big Easy is to stay out of the heat. Hey, that's a no-brainer, right? So here are 10 places you can visit even on the hottest of summer days. Picture this. You start your day at the aquarium, getting up close with all sorts of marine life. Then you stroll over to the insectarium and dive into the world of creepy crawlies, marveling at everything from butterflies to beetles. With so much to see and do, you could easily spend the whole day exploring both places. It's a comprehensive, immersive experience that's perfect for anyone looking to make the most out of their visit to New Orleans. So if you want to pack your day with unforgettable experiences, this is the way to go. You can now hit up the Audubon Insectarium with the same ticket you use for the Audubon Aquarium. It's like a two-for-one deal, and honestly, it's pretty awesome. For $39.95 for adults and $35.95 for kids, you get access to both attractions, making it an extraordinary value for an all-day adventure. First up, let me take you on a virtual tour of the Audubon Aquarium. This place is like the Beyonce of aquariums. It's not just any aquarium. It's one of the top five in the whole country, according to USA Today's 10 Best Readers Poll. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Stepping inside, it's basically signing up for a world tour of aquatic awesomeness. One moment, you're in the colorful fish-filled waters of the Caribbean. The next, you're trekking through the steamy Amazon rainforest. Then, before you know it, you're exploring the muddy waters of the Mississippi River and the vast, mysterious Gulf of Mexico. It's like Aquaman decided to throw a party and invited you. This place is bursting with life. We're talking over 3,600 animals from more than 250 species. It's not just your run-of-the-mill sea critters. They got endangered African penguins strutting their stuff and these super rare white alligators that look like they step right out of a fantasy novel. It's like the aquarium said, let's gather all the coolest, most unique animals and put them in one place, which I guess they did. And if you think that's all, the Audubon Aquarium is also big on conservation and education. They're not just showing off, they're genuinely invested in protecting these amazing creatures. It's an experience that sticks with you, whether you're a kid wide-eyed with wonder or an adult secretly more excited than the kids. So if you're in New Orleans and looking for something unforgettable, the Audubon Aquarium is the place to be. All right, buckle up because the Audubon Insectarium is like the Disneyland of bug zoos. Walking in, you're hit with the vibrant display showcasing over 50 exhibits of live anthropods, from butterflies with wings like stained glass to beetles with superhero armor. It's like a nature documentary come to life. The Butterfly Garden? It's a lush paradise where hundreds of butterflies flutter around you, almost Disney princess level magical. For the adventurous, Bug Appetit offers edible insect cuisine. From crunchy crickets to savory mealworms, it's a chance to challenge your taste buds and say you've eaten bugs on purpose. In a nutshell, the Audubon Insectarium is a multi-sensory extravaganza that takes you deep into the world of insects. With engaging exhibits, beautiful settings and unforgettable experiences. It proves that even the smallest creatures can make a big impact. All right, let's talk about the Britannia Theater, which is this incredibly charming and historic spot right in the heart of New Orleans. Founded way back in 1914, it started as an outdoor venue where, if it rained, patrons actually got rain checks. They eventually added a roof, making it a year-round haven for movie lovers. Britannia might be the last of its kind, but it definitely wasn't the first movie theater in New Orleans. The city's love affair with cinema 
kicked off in June of 1896 with a temporary exhibition in West End Park. Visionaries William Pop Rock and Walter Rainwright showed motion pictures, which were super new at the time, on a giant canvas screen. This was such a hit that they opened the Vitascope Hall at 623 Canal Street, the first permanent for-profit movie theater in the world. The Britannia Theater first opened in 1915, and it is officially the oldest movie theater in Louisiana. Plus, it's the only single screen theater in the state. Despite its age, Britannia facilities are totally modern, thanks to some recent renovations that kept all its historic charm intact while updating everything else. They screen a mix of new releases and older classics, which is perfect if you're into variety. And let's not forget the snacks. No trip to Britannia is complete without grabbing some classic cinema candy like Raisinets, Reese's Pieces, and Snow Caps. Plus, the smell of buttered popcorn is basically the best thing ever. In a city that's known for its vibrant culture and deep history, the Britannia Theater stands out as a true gem. Whether you're a diehard film fan or just looking for a unique experience, this historic theater offers a magical escape into the world of movies. So here we have this super elegant Spanish colonial building, which was built between 1795 and 1799 to replace another building that burned down in the fire of 1794. Because New Orleans just can't catch a break apparently. This place is called the Cabildo and it's kind of a big deal because it used to be the seat of government during the Spanish colonial period. Fast forward to today, and the Cabildo is like a time capsule that shows off the rich and colorful history of New Orleans and Louisiana. Its exhibits are a mix of permanent and rotating ones, and they showcase everything from famous historical figures to everyday people who lived in the area. It's like the ultimate history nerd's paradise. Oh, and if you're thinking about visiting, the entrance fee is $10 per adult. But wait, there's more. You get a 20% discount if you buy tickets for two or more Louisiana State Museums. So you might as well check out the Presbyter while you're at it, because why not? I highly recommend exploring this remarkable building. You're like, I want to see something super old and historic, right? Enter the St. Louis Cathedral. This place has been around in some form since the 1720s, making it one of the oldest buildings in the city. It's not just any old church, it's the oldest Catholic cathedral in the United States. Now let's get one thing straight. The original church? Totally gone. What we see today was mostly finished up in the mid-1850s. But here's a fun fact, they started adding fancy touches to it in the early 1800s. So it's got that old-timey charm, with a bit of an upgrade. If you go on a weekday, you'll mostly have the place to yourself. It's open from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and there's a mass at 12.05 p.m. if you're feeling spiritually adventurous. Saturdays at 5 p.m. and Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. are also times to catch mass if you want to experience the cathedral in full swing. But fair warning, it can get pretty busy. Oh, and if you're like, I want to learn more, but I don't want to talk to anybody, you can totally grab a self-guided tour brochure at the entrance for a $1 donation. It's like having a tiny paper tour guide that fits in your pocket. Perfect for those of us who prefer exploring at our own pace. Okay, so let's talk about the Presbyter, which was built in 1790 and was originally called the Ecclesiastical House. Fancy, right? It's done the rounds as a courthouse and a commercial business before settling into its current role as one of the five buildings in the French Quarter that makes up the Louisiana State Museum. Now if you want to visit, it's $7 for adults, which is basically the price of a fancy coffee. So totally worth it. The museum's first floor is all about Hurricane Katrina, and the second floor is dedicated to Mardi Gras. It's like the most New Orleans thing ever. A museum that's both extremely dangerous and at the same time divinely beautiful. Talk about capturing the essence of the city. Alright, let's talk about the French market. Imagine a place where history, 
culture, and commerce collide in a six-block explosion of everything that makes New Orleans, well, New Orleans. Way back before European colonization, Native Americans were already trading here. Fast forward a bit, and in 1791, the market starts to take shape in the colonial era, right near where Café de Mon now stands. As the city grew, so did the market, eventually becoming the French market we know today. Some of the buildings here date back to 1813, and they've seen all kind of renovations, especially during the 1930s when the Works Progress Administration got involved. Over the century, this place has transformed from a humble trading post to a vibrant bazaar, thanks to waves of immigrants from Europe, Africa, and the Caribbean. They all brought their own goods and traditions, turning the market into a melting pot of flavors and crafts. Nowadays, the French market is a hot spot for both locals and tourists. You've got food stands, restaurants, and outdoor dining spaces galore. Everyone's heard of Café de Monde, right? Their beignets and Café Orlais are legendary. But it doesn't stop there. The market's got jambalaya, oysters, and all sorts of exotic drinks. Then there's the Farmer's Market Pavilion. Open daily, and it's basically a foodie's dream come true. You can grab breakfast, lunch, or dinner from a variety of eateries offering everything from fresh produce to unique snacks. As you're strolling through the French market, you spot the Snowball Stand. These things have been a go-to for locals since the 1930s, which means they must be doing something right. I decided to go for a mango and cream snowball, because of course I did. Guys, when I say this snowball was delicious, I mean it was a tropical vacation in a cup. The mango was super sweet and juicy, and the cream added this rich, dreamy quality that made the whole thing taste like a magical cooling elixir. It's like the perfect antidote to melting in the New Orleans heat. Trust me, if you're anywhere near the French market, you need to try one of these. It's basically a historical edible air conditioner. And for those who love a good bargain hunt, the flea market is where it's at. Open air vendors sell a wide range of goodies, from t-shirts and homemade jewelry to accessories and photography. It's a blend of New Orleans tradition and new creativity, all in one place. In short, the French market isn't just a place to buy stuff. It's like stepping into a living museum of New Orleans rich history and vibrant culture. Whether you're there to eat, shop, or just soak up the atmosphere, the French market offers an experience that's uniquely New Orleans. Rock and Bowl is more than just a place to bowl. It's a cultural hub where New Orleans' obsession with music, food, and just having a good time all come together. Imagine trying to knock down pins while Zydeco and swing music are playing in the background. It's almost distracting in the best way possible. And seriously, whether you're a pro bowler or someone who just shows up for the nachos, Rock and Bowl has you covered. The vibe is the perfect mix of authentic gaudiness with super vibrant decor and off the charts energy. Tuesdays are for swing dancing. Wednesdays and Thursdays are all about Zydeco. And the weekends, a grab bag of performers that keeps things exciting and the dance floor packed. It's like the ultimate showcase of New Orleans' diverse music scene. Locals love it, tourists flock to it, and everyone leaves happy. Booking a lane is super straightforward. Just call ahead, reserve your spot, and you're good to go. You can have up to six people per lane, and you rent by the hour, which is nice. And the food situation? No worries there. They have a full kitchen and bar, offering everything from alcoholic drinks to surprisingly good entrees. The front porch grill serves up some delicious pub grub and New Orleans favorites, so you won't starve. Also, the place is decorated with murals by Tony Green, the accomplished gypsy jazz guitarist and New Orleans artist, which adds to the charm and really nails that New Orleans vibe. In short, Rock and Bowl is a true New Orleans gem that combines bowling, music, and dining to capture the city's lively essence. 
where you're there to bowl, dance, or just soak in the atmosphere. Rock and Bowl is basically the place to be. If your heart aches for some serious retail therapy, look no further. The Riverwalk Outlets isn't just any shopping mall. It's like the Avengers of outlet malls, assembled right on the banks of the mighty Mississippi. With over 75 retailers and restaurants, it's a paradise for anyone who revels in a good deal. The food court at the Riverwalk Outlets is like a culinary playground. Imagine grabbing a warm, buttery pretzel from Aunt Annie's, the kind that hits all the right spots with its hot cheese dip. Then there's Raising Cane's, dishing out those perfectly crunchy chicken fingers that make you wonder why anyone eats anywhere else. And Rock and Roll Sushi? I couldn't resist the tuna bowl. It was a choice well made, no regrets there. But the tastiness doesn't stop at the food court. Cafe de Mont is there, nearby too, serving up beignets and Cafe Erle that transports you straight back to Decatur Street. And for the sweet tooth, the Fudgery's decadent treats are a must. Shopping? Riverside Outlet has got all the heavy hitters. The Ralph Lauren Factory Store, with the feel of a comfortable polo shirt, always brings a smile. La Croise, because who doesn't need more fancy cookware? And Levi's, some things never change. And the best part, they're practically giving stuff away with discounts ranging from 25% to 65% off every single day at many of the Riverwalk outlet stores. I walked into Tommy Bahamas because of course I did and was met with a tidal wave of savings. Everything seemed to be 50% off or more. I picked up a pair of killer shorts priced at $110 and paid around $60 at checkout. And that's just at Tommy Bahamas. Many of the other stores are offering similar sales. So if you're looking to shop till you drop with a side of scenic river views, this is your spot. All right, buckle up for a tour of the New Orleans Museum of Art, the granddaddy of fine art institutions in the city. This place opened its doors way back on December 16, 1911, with a humble nine works of art. But it has since had a serious glow up. Now Noma is flexing with a permanent collection of nearly 50,000 pieces, making it one of the top art museums in the South. The collection here is like a greatest hits album of French and American art with some stellar photography, glass, African, and Japanese pieces thrown in for good measure. Noma keeps things fresh by constantly adding stuff, so there's always something new to see. It's not just a museum, it's a full-on experience designed to keep you engaged and maybe even teach you a thing or two. Noma is all about bringing people together, inspiring them, and making art accessible to everyone. They offer a ton of exhibitions, educational programs, and community events. So whether you're a hardcore art lover or just someone looking for a chill way to spend an afternoon, Noma has got you covered. It's a place that celebrates the enduring power of art and makes sure everyone gets a piece of the action. So if you're ever in New Orleans, make sure to carve out some time for Noma. You won't regret it. If you're ready to dive headfirst into history, the National World War II Museum is where you need to go. It started out as the National D-Day Museum, but leveled up in 2004 when Congress made it the official World War II Museum of the United States. It's smack in the middle of the Central Business District on Andrew Higgins Drive. Yes, named after the guy whose boats were pivotal in winning the war. Think of this place as a national monument to American participation in the Second World War. They officially opened on June 6, 2000, exactly 56 years after D-Day, because they love their historical anniversaries. The Higgins boat, critical for the Normandy invasion, was made in New Orleans, so having the museum here just makes sense. Plus, Stephen Ambrose, the historian who wrote a whole book on D-Day, 
lived in New Orleans, and pushed for the museum's creation. Inside, it's like an immersive experience with exhibits covering different theaters of the war, enhanced by fancy multimedia displays and video interviews with veterans. The Road to Berlin and Road to Tokyo exhibits are pretty dramatic, detailing the European and Pacific theaters in a meticulous way. They also have the Campaign of Courage Pavilion, where you can follow the chronological progress of the Allied forces through the different stages of the war. Plan to spend around two and a half to three hours here, but honestly, you might get sucked in and stay all day. The exhibits are so detailed and engaging that time just flies by. They also host special events and educational programs for deeper insights into specific aspects of the war. And if you get hungry, they got dining options like the American Sector Restaurant and Bar and the Soda Shop. It's like a full World War II experience with a side of fries. The American Sector serves classic American cuisine with a modern twist, while the Soda Shop gives off those nostalgic 1940 diner vibes with milkshakes, sundaes, and light bites. The museum store is also a thing, offering all kind of World War II themed merchandise, from books and apparel to unique mirabilia, so you can take a piece of history home with you. Overall, the National World War II Museum isn't just a bunch of old artifacts. It's an educational journey that really brings history to life. Whether you're a hardcore history buff, a student, or just someone looking for an engaging and an informative experience, this museum offers a deep dive into one of the most pivotal periods in world history. It's a place where stories of heroism, sacrifice, and resilience are vividly told, making it a poignant and memorable visit for everyone. I'd like to personally thank you for watching this episode. If you haven't seen our last episode, Southern Gothic Ghost Tales, do yourself a favor and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. I want you to follow, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. And remember, it's not goodbye. It's see you next Tuesday on Gulf Coastal Connections.